What a way to start a night with two fighters that nobody knows who the fuck they are. Because <laughs> they're not actual, well, they're actual people, but not really. They're not celebrities, so people are like, who the fuck are these people? I'm like, yeah, good question. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Lithuania, weighing in at 194 pounds, Sam And his opponent from Toronto, Canada, weighing in at 190 pounds, the Canadian Devil, the Spoon. There's the bell and we are underway. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our scheduled broadcast of Australian Takeover Thursday. Coming to you live from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm your ringside commentator, David Fosters. Joining me always, my partner in crime, ATT Hall of Famer, Bruce Johnson. Hey, yeah, Mike, good to be fucking back for yet another week of uh, Australian Takeover Thursday. Starting things off with a uh, good old-fashioned Spoo and fucking Sam Rye, Mike. Two of the uh, probably lesser-known... Uh, superstars for some newcomers, but uh, these two blokes have been around since the start of ATT, which is uh, just about almost two fucking years ago now, actually, funny enough. We started back in 2018, and it's now the start of 2020. So uh, we've certainly been along for a long ride, that's for damn sure. Both Samurai and the Spoo, of course, also don't have any uh, championship belts to their names. Although both of them have come close numerous times, the Spoo being a uh, runner-up in uh, multiple uh, Royal Rumbles, or at least one of the top contenders, Sam Rai being a runner-up in the Elimination Chamber from uh, first season Survivor Series. And not to mention he's gone head-to-head -head with uh, Dusty White, but unfortunately it was unable to come out on top in the uh, last few weeks. Yeah, two weeks ago. Actually, no, sorry, he did beat him. Two weeks ago, Sam Rye beat the shit out of uh, Dusty White. And then when Dusty was fighting Trash Man last week, Sam Rye called him out and challenged him for his uh, Boomerang Championship that he won. Meanwhile, the Spoo here, who has also been one of the, the top contenders for the uh, Boomerang Championship, lost uh, to Dusty White in the uh, True Blue Championship brackets. Since Dusty was seed number one and Spoo was seed number fucking 32. So both of these cunts actually lost their first round uh, in the Triple Championship and now they're going head to head here tonight. Yeah, the Triple Championship, of course, has been going on over the past uh, month or so. 
And uh, we have our first round completed, which means we have our final 16 competitors. From 32 down to half, uh, we'll be finding out who moves on to the uh, semifinals uh, later on uh, tonight and uh, next week. Sam with a quick cover here. One, two. That one, Spoo with a kick out of two. Yeah, we got uh, Little Mac and Vladimir Putin coming up later. That's going to be one of our uh, semi-final matchups. We've also got Dusty White taking on fucking Senator Armstrong. That should, uh, that'll be a hell of a match. And then I know we've got some more uh, tournament action fucking next week, but who knows what we've got planned for then. Not to mention, coming up next, we got Wee Fit and Raven going ahead to head with the uh, number two and number three seeded uh, superstars as their uh, managers. You have both Raven and Wee Fit with the managers for Shaq and Terminator, and now they seem to be re, uh, returning the fucking favor for them. More of that yet to come, but right now, Sam putting Spoo in the corner. Going to work with a deja vu. Sam now going for the quick cover. One. No, one count. And Spill kicks out. There was a fucking two before. Now all of a sudden he's got plenty of energy left to go. But then again, it takes more than that to put down uh, anybody in this business, mate. But Sam, we're going to put the Canadian Devil away. Oh, look at cut. Code breaker coming through. One, two, three. There's the bell, and that's all she wrote. Okay, I think Spoo was supposed to win that one then, because nothing happened after the match. Also, my PC is like lagging, so excuse that thing. Quick victory too, one fucking finishing move, and that was all she wrote. Sam with a quick and decisive victory there over the Spoo, proving why he was uh, seated higher in the Triple Championship. I'm sure this motivation will uh, help him fight Dusty uh, in the upcoming weeks, but don't go anywhere. We got Divas matchups coming up next. As soon as I find the fucking music for him. There's that one, and there's that one. Right. Can you imagine how annoying... Uh, well, I mean, I guess a Lego wrestler isn't impossible. Because since I've got the fucking the heads and the gloves, pants wouldn't be too hard. I don't know. I'd say you bet, by the way. And then you change the 0 to a 1 if you want to bet on Raven, or a 0 if you want to bet on Wii Fit. And then the second number is how much you want to bet. The following Divas match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied by Shaquille O'Neal from Tokyo, Japan, We Fit Trainer.
and her opponent, accompanied by the Terminator from Jump City, Reaver. As the bell in our second matchup is underway for a scheduled Divas match between uh, We Fit and Raven here tonight. Yeah, with uh, the respective managers in the corners, it's sort of a bit of a role reversal here, mate. Since both the, the Terminator and Shaquille O'Neal had their uh, respective Divas in their corners for their True Blue Championship matchups, and well, now it's the other way around. No championships are on the line here, but it's nice to return the favour, though, you know. For those unaware, the Triple Championship that has been um, happening over the last month or so is a 32 entrant single elimination tournament between the uh, top 32 competitors here at Australian Takeover. Shaquille O'Neal seated in at number three, meanwhile the Terminator at seat number two. The top four seated competitors get a manager of their choice for the first round. Shaquille O'Neal had Wii Fit, Terminator had Raven, Little Mac had Doc, and Dusty White had his sister Rose. All four of them, uh, I believe, made it through the first round, except for Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, surprisingly, out of the top four, Shaquille O'Neal was the only one to uh, not make it through. He lost to uh, Donkey Kong, who is uh, known for pulling a few upsets from before. I know that much. Terminator distracting Wii Fit for Raven here. Raven unable to uh, capitalize on the opportunity. Either that or she just didn't want to cheat, mate. Who knows? Although Terminator, like, like we said with the Triple Championship, he made it through no problem. So he beat Ruji not once but twice because uh, Ruji called for a rematch. Uh, after he believed it was an unfair ruling, Terminator agreed and he still kicked his ass. So he'll fight through, he'll go through with a fight to uh, fucking Duke Nukem in the upcoming weeks. And uh, DK, well, he's got to fight Steve Owen and, uh, well, Steve's the master of beasts, so it'd be interesting to see how that one fucking plays out, mate. That's all that true blue action yet to come. Uh, coming up next, though, we do have Little Mac and Vladimir Putin, two of the uh, final 16 for the true blue championship. And we've got top seeded Dusty White. Going up against Senator Armstrong. Yeah, this has been good fucking matchups, mate. And not to mention, we've got some uh, tag team action coming up later. That should be pretty good. Although, enough about the managers, we haven't really talked about the two divas themselves, both Raven and uh, We Fit. Two of the divas that have been around since the start of Australian Takeover, though we haven't really gotten any new ones. Yeah, the only new uh, diva we got was the Season 2 pass with fucking uh, Samus Aran. We did start with five divas, and these two are uh, part of the five. And now we fit with a beautiful hand scissor takedown. Sorry, head scissor takedown. Once again, getting distracted by the Terminator, unable to uh, capitalize. But you will keep a momentum going here. Beautiful uh, buckle bomb there. Terminator once again, putting his manager skills to, uh, to use there. But Raven will uh, refuse to uh, capitalize on this. You know, very good uh, communication between uh, the Terminator and Raven here. Now look at Terminator, what's he doing here? He's pulling in a chair. I don't know, I think Raven's just going to straight up ignore it, probably. It seems that these two don't really make a very good combination, do they? 
Hey, they did all right with uh, when Raven as the manager, but I don't know. Terminator seems to be pulling out all the stops, but Raven just doesn't seem to accept them. <laughs> Maybe Raven feels like she might not need him. She is a uh, two-time uh, Sheila's champion. Not to mention she held the uh, championship for 12 weeks. Which in of itself is its own record. Raven finally taking the uh, opportunity there, what Terminator presented. Although we fit no slouch either, she herself has also won the uh, Sheila's Championship. But only held on to it for four weeks. And now Raven here. Ooh, beautiful head scissor takedown from the top rope. Actually, I think that one was a uh, Harukurana, mate. A bit different from the uh, head scissor takedown. Oh, hang on. Wee Fitz coming out here. What's she doing? Oh, look at We Wee Fitz looking to put Raven through the table, though. Can she do it is the question. Yeah, but from everybody who actually rips up this fucking table, I've only seen about 30% of the cunts go through it, so... Uh... Well, now we pretty much just got a ripped up table for no reason. Yep, in she goes. Here, so I have to fix up the fucking monitors uh, when they piss off. We fit now, returning into the squared circle. I'm surprised uh, fucking Terminator hasn't been sent out yet with all the distracting he's been fucking doing. Speaking of. He's really been tilting this match into fucking Raven's favor, but uh, she hasn't been able to capitalize on it, mate. We fit still been in the majority of the control. And now look at this, we fit. Oh, beautiful leg drop. And now shoulders are down. One, two. Oh, and the Terminator just pulling out the referee. God, he's really pulling out all the fucking stops, ain't he? Terminator pleading with the referee. Something you don't see too often there. There we go. I think Ref has sent Terminator back to the locker room. And now Raven will have to do this by herself here. Yeah, she's got a fucking long road to climb, that's for sure. But uh, beautiful moonlight drive there. That'll, uh, that'll get us started. Quick cover here. One, two. No, and a kick out at two and a half. Raven once again getting put in the corner here. Under the top turnbuckle she goes. There's only one way down. But Raven with a quick uh, counter. Oh, and a beautiful clothesline from the top rope. That's the thing about putting your uh, your opponent on that top turnbuckle. If they fucking get you out of the way, that's just a free diving move for them. Let us say about that fucking top rope, it's uh, high risk, high reward. But then again, you also go for a diving move, you can be countered just as easily. I've seen some cunts that uh, go for a diving elbow and they got caught by a fucking spear in midair. So, uh, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Raven now wearing down on a Wii Fit Trainer, putting her on the bottom rope here. Oh, we've seen this before. Oh, yeah, she's fucking lining her up, mate. Look out for the drop kick. Bang! There it is. Wii Fit looks to be knocked out cold. Raven going for the cover. One, two. And now Shaquille O'Neal pulling out the referee. Well, I mean, that is the first thing he's done all match. So I don't think the ref will send him out. Just give him a warning. But I tell you what, that ref must have been getting <laughs> must be getting sick of getting pulled out of the fucking ring. First the Terminator and now Shaquille O'Neal. These managers really uh, disrupting the flow of the matchup. That's for damn sure. Well, of course, in the history of uh, Australian Takeover and even in WWE itself, 
Uh, the manager, of course, is a uh, big difference maker. Whether it be through just cheering you on or distracting the uh, players or referees, the manager certainly has a lot of options open to them. Beautiful rolling neckbreaker by Wee Fit. Now into the corner here with another buckle bomb coming through. Sorry about that, having a few uh, Mikey shoes on our end here. Anyway, getting back into the action, we fit just getting out of that uh, three count only barely. Then pulling through with the uh, the big power bomb, and now we fit with another handstand leg drop coming through. And now shoulders are down. One, two, three. There's the bell, and that's all she wrote. Poor fucking ref. Well, it took a bit of work, but we fit finally getting the uh, the victory there. Yeah, fucking uh, Terminator got sent out, and uh, fucking Shaquille O'Neal almost got sent out himself. So you can really tell what the uh, what difference a fucking manager makes. That's for damn sure. Don't go anywhere, though. We got True Blue tournament action coming up next with Little Mac and Vladimir Putin. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the Bronx, New York, standing five foot tall and weighing 117 pounds, Little Mac.
And his opponent from St. Petersburg, Russia, weighing in at 227 pounds, Vladimir Putin. There's the bell, and our third matchup tonight is underway. Little Mac taking on Vladimir Putin for our first uh, final 16 matchup for the True Blue Championship. Yeah, we, we uh, decided our final 16, and now we're going to fucking wither them down to eight. So you can see who becomes our uh, eight semifinalists. Like we said before, we got Dusty White and Senator Armstrong coming up later, but right now we got Little Mac and fucking uh, Vladimir Putin. Seeds number 4 and 20, respectively. Yeah, big difference between them. Little Mac, of course, beat out uh, Big Smoke at seat number 29. Vladimir Putin beating out Crocodile Dundee at seat number 13. Yeah, so uh, Vladimir pulled a bit of an upset, mate. But um, you got to remember, he is a former Outback champion as well. And not to mention Season 2's Money in the Bank winner. Although the reason he won the uh, Outback Championship is because of the Money in the Bank, funny enough. I mean, of course, Little Mac, uh, one of our top seeded competitors because of the amazing winning streak he was on and his high win rate. Little Mac went 7 for 7 before finally losing in a fatal four way free for all. Uh, Falls counts anywhere, sorry. Which was his first ever loss in the, uh, in the business. He's also won the uh, Boomerang Championship as well and gone toe to toe with uh, some of the top contenders in the business. such as Senator Armstrong and Dusty White. Yeah, I've heard a few people complain, you know, Dusty's like too strong or he's the face of the series, but it's like, you know, just look at his stats. I mean, they, they really speak for themselves, honestly. It's why he's the, the number one city competitor, and I'll be damn surprised if uh, someone beats him. Although if I had to put my money on anybody to beat him, Senator Armstrong's definitely, uh, definitely one of them. I know that much. But if he beats Armstrong, then he's got to first either Shaggy or Mega Man in the next round. And I don't know if either of them can pull it off. Maybe Shaggy, considering he has the best win rate in the business. Of course, uh, Vladimir Putin has been around since the uh, start of Australian Takeover. He, of course, made his first appearance in his tag team of the Presidents of Power, but right now, the beautiful Russian leg sweep coming through. One. Two. No, a two and a half, and Matt kicks out. Oh, man, the Presidents of fucking Power. That's a tag team name I haven't heard in years, mate. One of the first tag teams, and probably the first tag team to actually disband, funny enough. I think they only lasted about, what, four months? And Little Mac not looking to last much longer himself. Cold winner stunner coming through. Oh, right in the center of the fucking match, too. One, two, three. What a fucking quick matchup that one was. Good on you, Vlad. Well, what a fucking upset that was, too. Seat number 20 just beat out seat number four. I don't know if that speaks on uh, how balanced these guys are or how out of sync my fucking seating is. Probably both. Well, 
Vladimir Putin once again pulling off an upset, this time even bigger than his uh, initial round. Beating out seed number four with uh, one cold winner stunner, and that was all she wrote. Fucking hell, we're getting uh, a few quick matches tonight, I'll tell you what, mate. But uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. We've got a tag team match coming up next, and uh, that one's going to take a while to get through. Not to mention fucking tag team matches take like six years to load. Ugh. I was like, wait, isn't there supposed to be three rivalries tonight? But yeah, there is. This is one of them. The same Rye was one, this is two, and then the Mario Brothers are the main event. I was like, where's my fucking second rivalry? But I'm literally staring at it. <laughs> uh. My throat, and I was going to have Mega Man fight tonight, but I couldn't because he had a fucking tag matchup, so I had to shove him into next week. The following tag team match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the United States, with a combined weight of 524 pounds, Robocop and Sergeant Silent Derp, the Enforcers. And their opponents, from South Korea and Dr. White's Lab, Mega Man and Pepsi Man, the Blue Man Group. There's the bell, and we are underway for our first tag matchup of tonight. The Enforcers, of course, taking on the Blue Man Group. Here tonight for Australian Takeover. Yeah, the uh, the Enforcers sort of going back and forth with the Dark Horses over the past couple of weeks. Now uh, taking a bit of a break, per se, and uh, fighting someone else instead. The Dark Horses beat the Enforcers uh, the first week back of this month, and then they also beat the Warrior Brothers while the, uh, the Enforcers were taking a bit of a break. And now it's the Dark Horse's turn to take a break and the Enforcers to uh, come in. The Blue Man Group beat the Texas Boys last week, but can they beat the Enforcers this week? Although they've certainly uh, done it before, I know that's for sure. Of course, also both of these tag teams, former Cut Duo champions, Blue Man Group won it back at uh, Payback, giving Mega Man the uh, quickest season two uh, newcomer title victory. Meanwhile, the Enforcers won it uh, back at Night of Champions, 
at the result of the finale for the Tag Team Championship, uh, King of the Ring, where the eight tag teams all fought it out for the championship belt, and the, uh, the Enforcers beat out the Texas Boys in the finale. And of course, after the Warrior Brothers took a uh, shot at the title and missed, the Dark Horses came along and uh, stole the championship from the uh, the Enforcers. Yeah, the Enforcers are uh, trying to get it back, but they were unsuccessful uh, last month at, uh, fuck, I can't even remember what the pay-per-view was called, eh? Because my memory's fucking going to shit. No way out. That was it. The Dark Horses defended their fucking uh, championship and... But speaking of pay-per-view events, Royal Rumble, next fucking week, it's going to be great. I tell you what, I cannot wait. Royal Rumble is without a doubt my favourite pay-per-view event of the fucking year. Not just for the 30-man Royal Rumble, but we're also bringing in some new shit at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view event. We've got the new layout uh, for Australian TakeOver. We've also got the five new Season 3 superstars that we're bringing in. You know, they they handcrafted fucking newcomer trailers, which are fantastic, by the way. Me and uh, me and David here have actually seen the trailers, and they look pretty solid, mate. Of course, that's all to come in the future, but uh, before we can get there, we've got to get through uh, about another eight matchups. Sorry, nine. I can't count. The three from tonight and the six from next week before we get to our Royal Rumble. And right now, Pepsi Man doing some uh, serious work onto, uh, I was about to call him Sam Rye, Sergeant Silent Derp here. Yeah, funny enough, I know that Pepsi Man and uh, fucking Robocop have had some uh, differences in the past, and it's interesting to see that they've both got their own tag team partners coming in tonight. And now Pepsi Man with a Pepsi punch. And now shoulders are down. One, two. Now in silent derp with a kick out of two. Yeah, out of the four I've met there, I gotta say Pepsi Man's probably the uh, most dangerous competitor. That's for sure. Because not only is a uh, a former cut duo champion. He's also a two-time fucking boomerang champion as well. And out of the four of them, he is the top seeded competitor. Sitting at a number five, I believe. Pepsi Man and Mega Man, of course, the only two to make it through to the first round. Both uh, Robocop and uh, Sergeant Silent Derp lost in their uh, first round back. Robocop actually, funny enough, lost to Mega Man. Meanwhile, Pepsi Man beat out uh, Bubsy. And Sergeant Silent Derp losing to Mr. L. Yeah, I'm sure Robocop will, uh, definitely doesn't like this fucking tag team, that's for sure. His issues with uh, Pepsi Man in the past, not to mention losing to uh, Mega Man in the True Blue Championship. So this is definitely a tag team that Robocop wants to beat. No, the coolest thing about tag teams is you've got a fucking partner as well, so you've got to uh, rely on them if you want to get that win. Robocop keeping the momentum up here, putting uh, Pepsi Man into the corner, right into the trio wall. What a beautiful backstabber there. Of course, we got uh, more tag team action coming up later on tonight with the Mario Brothers taking on, we think, the uh, the True Blue Aussies, but we're not entirely sure. Beautiful uh, truth of consequences there by Robocop, though. One, two, no one to kick out of two. Robocop keeping the momentum up on his side here. And now, trying to put him away. 
Oh, look out, cut, because you got to get some true conviction. Oh, face first. Will this Pips man even have a face? Who knows? One. Two. No, a two and a half, and uh, Pepsi Man kicks out. Pepsi Man once again getting put in the corner here. Oh, fucking shoulder first into that steel post. I tell you what, even though Pepsi Man's our fucking top seeded competitor, he's sort of getting the shit kicked out of him by Robocop. And now, shoulders it out once more. One, two, three. That's the bow, and that was all she wrote. And now, look who's come out to play here. The Dark Horse is coming out to taunt the, uh, the Enforcers here. Yeah, they just picked up a big win, and, uh, well, now the, the Dark Horse is looking to fuck it up. I'm sure we'll see those two clash next week, but don't go anywhere. We got more True Blue action coming up next, right after this. Senator, Senator, where the fuck is his music? There we go. Okay. Nep Berry, also known as Nep, or known as fucking Guruko, or whatever the fuck else it is. You're a fucking cunt. I'm sure those points were well spent, you fucking cunt. Oh, wait, no, I gotta pronounce it like what it says in the, in the reward, which is a uh, CAT! Oh, so the reason Silence a Fighter and not you is because Silence has been around before WWE was even set up, so. That's why he's a fighter. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first. From Matback, Australia, weighing in at 232 pounds, he is the Outback Champion, Dusty White! opponents 
from Colorado, United States, weighing in at over 400 pounds, Senator Armstrong, the Outback Champion. There's the bell, and we are underway for it is champ v champ here for the uh, True Blue Championship. And there goes that notification system again. So I'm derp sending in uh, multiple biddies one at a time. Appreciate the uh, the single bit, technically two, I suppose. That's sending it right as we get into our True Blue action of the Boomerang Champion Dusty White taking on the Outback Champion of Senator Armstrong. As they're scheduled to go up against each other in the uh, True Blue bracket, Dusty at uh, seed number one, uh, Senator Armstrong at seed number 17. Armstrong beating out uh, Gummy John in his previous match, while Dusty White sa uh, sailing through against the Spook. Now Dusty doesn't have his manager. How will he fare against the two-time and current Outback champion, Senator Armstrong? Well, you gotta remember Dusty White's a fucking two-time Outback Champion himself. Not to mention he held the record for the longest title reign for the Outback Championship at 20 fucking weeks, I might add. He's also a three-time and the current Boomerang Champion, and he's held on the Boomerang Championship for 12 weeks, tying the record with fucking Shaquille O'Neal, who's also a three-time 12-week holder for the Boomerang Championship. But if anybody can fucking beat uh, Dusty White, I reckon Senator Armstrong is definitely in for a shoe in from it. Armstrong, of course, is one of the top contenders here for Australian takeover, but then again, so is Dusty White. Although Armstrong did get seated in quite low due to his uh, a very low uh, win rate compared to some of the others. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Senator Armstrong's sitting at about to 40% or so. Meanwhile, Dusty White sitting up above 65%, uh, I believe. And uh, that might not seem like much, but trust me, in this business, that makes a big difference between the uh, 40 and 65. The highest being at like 72 or something with fucking Shaggy. Even though his first ever match here was the fucking Royal Rumble, which he lost. But he did come in at seat number two, so pretty hard to win a matchup when you're uh, that early in the game. Yeah, with last year's Royal Rumble, it was won by Sergeant Silent Derp, who was seed number 29. Getting the lucky seeding helped him uh, win the first season's Royal Rumble and get him the uh, championship match he desired at WrestleMania against Dusty White. Yeah, and he failed to get it at uh, WrestleMania, and he failed to get it at uh, Extreme Rules, which definitely helped Dusty get that uh, all-impressive 20-week record that he uh, now holds. Although, of course, both Dusty and Senator Armstrong will have to defend their uh, titles at Royal Rumble next uh, next week. It's amazing to see who uh, who qualifies for those matchups. What's even more interesting is who's going to win uh, this year's Royal Rumble. Last year it was Silent Dirt, but uh, who's going to pull through this year is the question. Armstrong now. Oh, the beautiful head buster right on the top turbuckle there. Oh, you're definitely going to be fucking feeling that one, mate. And now over the top rope we go. Speaking of the Royal Rumble. And now down the ringside. Yeah, I think Armstrong feels a uh, bit more at home on the, uh, the ringside, mate. He's definitely more of a uh, street brawler than anything else. Although, you know, he did play college football. Apparently, he would have gone pro if he didn't join the uh, the Navy, or so he tells us. 
Although I didn't think I could imagine Senator Armstrong as anything else other than, well, a senator. Just doesn't feel right, you know? Dusty White having Armstrong in the corner here. White Twister coming through. And now Dusty with a quick cover. One, two. No, and a two and a half, and Armstrong gets the kick out. It'll take a lot more than that to, to uh, fucking, oh, good lord. Dusty White just got fucking flattened. One, two. No, a two and a half, and Dusty gets the kick out. But what a fucking reversal that was. Dusty White pulling out the white twister. And now Armstrong with the American clothesline. Dusty White back to his feet there with a quick clothesline to drop kick combo. Trying to regain for lost ground. And now into the snap man. But you gotta love some of these fucking matchups, mate, when they're truly just this quick back and forth contest. Neither one of these cunts giving an inch, trying to gain the upper hand, and it's truly something else to watch. And now look at this. Armstrong starting the march. Look out, cunt. Because you're about to get fucking shell shocked. Oh, big impact. Armstrong with a quick cover now. One, two, three. There's the mill, and what an upset. And there goes the top seeded cut. Well, like I said, if it was anybody that was going to fucking beat Dusty, it was going to be Armstrong. I'm kind of glad I didn't bet, because I would have lost money. <laughs> but then again, I've got so much money, like, who gives a shit, so... I think that, that match came down to who got the, uh, the finishing move out first, and sure enough, it was uh, Armstrong. I reckon a blue th uh, white Thunderbolt might have put uh, Armstrong in a commission, though. Senator Armstrong coming off a beautiful upset. He will move on in the Triple Championship, knocking out the uh, tough seat of Dusty White. Hey, Outback Champion beats Boomerang Champion, apparently. Don't go anywhere, though. We got our main event coming up next to so the Mario Brothers versus the Triple Aussies, I think. Is it gonna be someone else? No, it is the Triple Aussies. Okay, cool. Because like they don't show up in the the overlay screen, so I was like, who the fuck are they versing? So I had to actually open it up, and it's like, oh, okay, it is the uh, the Triple Aussies. Nice. I also can't find the fucking music. There it is. And of course, the uh, Mario and Luigi have been having their uh, differences, so it's interesting to see what's gonna come out of this one. I have a feeling this will end with a tag team breakup. If I had to put my money on something, that, that would be what it is. That's what I'm going for as well, so. All according to Kakeku. Kakeku? Plan. I can't say the Japanese name. I'm a failure of a fucking weeb. proof it's all rigged I mean it's not I don't rig the outcomes of the matchups but then again also the rivalries have fucked me over in the past I have a desired outcome but that doesn't mean it's going to end this way I love these because it's the wrong fucking person it's, it's supposed to be fucking his brother but it's obviously not it does it every fucking time. Every time it's that animation, and all for some reason it makes the other bloke the fucking animation, but uh, whatever. We're just gonna act like it was Mr. L. <clears throat> anyway. 
There's the bow, and our main event is underway. The Mario Brothers taking on the True Blue Aussies to uh, round out for a night here at Australian Takeover Thursday. Hey, the Mario Brothers have been, uh, been having quite a few disagreements over the past few weeks with uh, Mario and uh, Mr. L. Uh, the Mario Brothers first had a disagreement a couple of weeks ago when uh, Mario went for the got the pinfall, but apparently Mr. L was unsatisfied with that. Uh, the two of them then had a uh, 1v1 match last week. To which, of course, Mario won that one. Tried to go for the hand check, got denied. And now they're here this week, and now they couldn't decide on who comes out first. But uh, seems Mario won that argument. He'll be going up against fucking uh, Crocodile Dundee. And of course, both of these tag teams, former two time Cunt Duo champions. The Triple Aussies, of course, being our original Cunt Duo champs. But they haven't won the championship since last year. Meanwhile, the Mario Brothers first won their uh, championship, I believe, at uh, Hell in a Cell for Season 1. Lasted at the Royal Rumble. And I believe won it again, kind of recently? I believe it was at... Uh, Extreme Rules, if I remember correctly, that they beat um, Team Fabulous for the the, uh, the Cunt Duo Championship. And then lost it to the... Uh, fucking blue man group not a, not even four weeks later I don't know I've gotten it all written down but my memory's fucking garbage so who knows don't need now I'm making a quick tag to Steve here of course looking at all these tag teams these four members have all been uh, entered into the uh, true blue championship at different seedings uh, Mr. L made it in at seed number 10, beating out uh, Sergeant Silent Dirt. Super Mario was seed number 12, yet lost to Hank Hill at seed number 21. Uh, Steve Rowe in seed number 14, he beat out uh, Skeletor. And Crocodile Dundee lost to Vladimir Putin, who of course made it through as our first semi-finalist. So, I guess to say he's not taking the, vic uh, the loss too much. Mario Brothers making some uh, quick tags there, but uh, unable to gain the momentum as uh, Steve Irwin just steams roll through, steam rolls through with the uh, combinations there. Hey, the Triple Aussies haven't had too much, uh, too many victories recently with uh, the Triple Cha uh, sorry, not the Triple, the Conduo Championship. Although I have a feeling they'll get a strong victory here against uh, the Re disorganized Mario Brothers. Of course, we'll have more action just like this on uh, next week's program of uh, Australian Tech Row Thursday, which will only be two days away from the Royal Rumble. I think I already talked about how much I can't wait, can I? I seem to talk about the Royal Rumble way too fucking much, but hey, let's be real. A, it's a great event, and B, we're pushing all the good shit into the Royal Rumble to make it even better, so. The fact that it's even better than fucking WrestleMania or something else, let me tell you. Steve Arrow now makes the quick tag to Dundee. As Mr. L goes to work here. Oh, with a quick double combo. And now Mr. L on the top rope. Oh, beautiful Goomba Stomp! Right under the chest of uh, Dundee. Mr. Outer going to work. Beautiful European uppercut there. Oh, and just continuing to stomp away at the guts of Dundee. Yeah, that fucking midsection of Dundee you're really taking uh, some punishment there. That's for damn sure. Imagine what it's like getting fucking stomped on like a mid-air like that. It's uh, it's not pretty, mate. Good thing we didn't, uh, probably didn't eat beforehand. Probably be chucking up his fucking lunch by now. I know I would be. Dundee making the quick tag back to Steve. Great uh, teamwork here by the uh, Triple Aussies. And it's Steve Irwin met with a Goomba stomp as soon as he tags in. One. Two. Oh, and Steve gets the kick out of two. 
Hey, what a fucking way to come in a match. If you get tagged in, you immediately get fucking Goomba stomped by Mr. L. Not a great way to uh, start a tag, I know that's for sure, but beautiful dingo bomber there by uh, Steve, though. Great way to come back into the matchup. He'll get a one count for his troubles. Need to uh, put a bit more punishment on the Mr. L there, boys. Quick elbow to the, uh, the forehead will do it, though. Steve biding his time here. Not sure how he wants to uh, follow up here. Goes for the quick overhead, but uh, Mr. L with the quick counter. And another European overcut. Hey, the name broke, don't fix it. Mario now getting the uh, tag in here. And into the corner we go. Oh, hang on, this is not somewhere you want to beat. Thankfully, he's not faced in the other direction. Otherwise, he'd be getting fucking hammer dropped. Right now, he's going to get fucking uh, fireman slammed. Steve now back to his feet. And a Goomba stomp for the second time. Now, this time by Mario. Shoulders are down. Two and a half count again. And Steve Ruin kicks out. Well, I don't think Steve could take uh, too, more, too much more punishment, though. Oh, a big slam there by Mario. Steve quickly gets out of trouble. Beautiful reverse uh, slam, though. Steve finding an opportunity. Tags back to Dundee. Oh, this fucking piss off fly. Little cunt's fucking... Bothering us here. Anyway, Mario now on the fucking top turnbuckle. He's about to get some fucking taste of his own medicine here. Yep, sure enough. Fucking rolling slam. Dundee goes for a cover. Gets a two and a half. Mario fucking uh, kicks out. So I don't think I've seen any fucking big moves from Dundee yet, so. Be interesting to see when he pulls him out, but he's going for the top rope here. Look out, cunt. Oh, dive an elbow. Right to the midsection. Steve, uh, don't need going for the kick on the back there. Missing the mark. Now getting thrown into the corner. Quick tag here. Oh, beautiful throw into a uh, DDT there by the Mario Brothers. And now Mr. L in the corner. Oh, look out, cunt. Green missile coming through. No, Dundee gets out of the way of it. And now Dundee looking to fire right back here. Fuck it out, back slam. Look out, cunt. Bang. What a fucking combination that was. One, two, three. There's the bow, and that's all she wrote. Why didn't the tag partners come in to interrupt that? That's weird. Usually they should interrupt it if it's a three count. Or at least, has the, if a pin has the potential to be a three count, the tag partner should be coming in to stop it. So I thought that was going to be a two and a half or something because they didn't interrupt. So that's interesting. Like, yes, it was a finisher move, but uh, that's still weird. I don't know. Maybe fucking Mr. L took a fall. Who knows? I sure as shit didn't plan that. <laughs> I know that much is true. Doesn't help my claim of uh, not rigging it though, that's for fucking sure. Because <laughs> I don't, but this game doesn't help me fucking prove that fact right. Ah. Oh well, we'll see what happens in these next six matchups. Which are coming up next, by the way, even though I will say units in next week. That's just for the realism. Maybe not breaking the realism by talking right now, but hey, fuck you. I'm allowed to break character during these bits. What a turnaround right at the end there. Dundee getting out of the way of the green missile and then firing right back on an outback slam. 
getting him that over important three count and the first victory for the True Bellazis in quite some time. Yeah, it just took a disorganized Mario Brothers tag team to uh, get that victory. Hopefully they can pull some more big victories uh, in the following weeks, but that's all from us at Australian Takeover Thursday. We'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. You all know the fucking drill. We go to an ad break and uh, I set up the next lot of matchups. So, yeah, we'll be right back after this. Perfect to what I need. Wait, shit. I started the wrong match. Hold on. <laughs> I was hovered over the wrong match. I meant to start the first match and I've started the fifth match. Hold on. Come on, load already, you bastard, so I can cancel it. Quit. Not next. Okay. Canada. That one. That one. That one. Now we're right. I'm a fucking dumbass. Alright, now we Gucci boys.
get stuck back into it, eh? The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, for the Mushroom Kingdom, weighing in at 215 pounds, Super Mario. And his opponent, from parts unknown, weighing in at 177 pounds, Mr. L. There's the bell and we're underway. And even ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another scheduled broadcast of Australian Takeover Thursday. I'm your ringside commentator, David Foster. Is joining me all the way is my partner in crime, ATT Hall of Famer. Yeah, Bruce Johnson. Yeah, how you going? Back at it fucking again, once again, with our fourth and uh, final week here of uh, month 10. Meanwhile, we're only two days away from the fucking Royal Rumble, mate. Oh, I cannot fucking wait, let me tell you. I think I express my uh, excitedness for the Royal Rumble just about every week, but it uh, doesn't take away the fact that it's still my favorite pay-per-view event, even more so than WrestleMania, but WrestleMania did get improved this year, but then again, so did the Royal Rumble. Yeah, for those of you who have been keeping track, last year we unveiled the Season 2 Superstars at Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Now that event has been replaced with No Way Out, so we've moved our uh, Season 3 newcomer trailers to the Royal Rumble. The main reason to moving it, of course, was that it is our favorite event here at Australian Takeover, so we figured we'd put the uh, the hype trailers at the start and have the uh, Royal Rumble at the end. Meanwhile, from start to finish, it is a uh, spectacular event you really don't want to miss out on. Yeah, not to mention we're also throwing in the uh, brand new uh, layout that we've got uh, planned. And uh, oh, it, it looks fucking nice, but the more I talk it up, the less it, less good it's going to look as we unveil it. So we'll uh, talk about that some other time. But right now, we got fucking Mr. L and Mario going head to head again. Mario won uh, two weeks ago when they first uh, head to head against each other. They won the uh, first tag team match they had, but lost uh, last week against the fucking Trubal Aussies. Mr. L had his uh, green missile counter, then got stuck into a fucking outback slam, and that was all she wrote. 
So I'm sure Mr. L's looking to prove that he's not uh, quite as worthless here tonight to uh, beat up his brother. Oh, sorry, to beat up Mario. Same difference. Yeah, the Mario Brothers, of course, have been on uh, rocky ground the past few weeks. Luigi being replaced with this uh, Mr. L ever since uh, SummerSlam. Which, of course, was around the time when Mario won his uh, Boomerang Championship. And since then, the two brothers have been uh, growing more, more and more apart from each other. So it'd be interesting to see how the uh, relationship between these two unfolds. Uh, coming up to the uh, Royal Rumble. Of course, I'm sure that both of them will be uh, entering into the Rumble. Yeah, considering neither of them uh, a champion at the moment or looking at a uh, championship shot uh, this week. So they're pretty much guaranteed to get into the uh, Royal Rumble. Since the Rumble is open to just about everybody who's either not a champion or uh, is not having a championship shot. Since last year we did have uh, champions or former champions at the time in the Rumble. Mario with a quick cover here gets the two count. Since Mario himself actually at the time he was the can't do a champion lost at Royal Rumble, yet he was still able to enter the Rumble itself, even though he was technically a champion at the time. So definitely a, a seeding mistake that we'll fix up this year probably. A lot of things we did fix from season one. It was a it was a bit rocky. Certainly a learning experience anyway. Mario taking Mr. L all the way down to the uh, barricade here. Look out. Holy shit. Mario just fucking green missile Mr. L straight to the fucking barricade. Oh, took a bit of taste of your own fucking medicine, cunt. Oh, he's just going to leave him out there. Yeah, right up. Mr. L now knocked out. He's slowly getting back to his feet, though. Get back to the ring just before the uh, count out. Oh, and a quick Goomba stomp. Firing right back. Mr. Allen, not out of the matchup yet. Yeah, goes for a quick cover here. One, two. Now in Mario with a kick out of two. But Mr. Allen now. After getting put through that barricade, still looking pretty fresh here, going to work. Oh, hang on. Putting Mario on the ropes here, look out. Oh, you know what they say, what goes around comes around. Oh, a green missile. Right through the fucking ropes. Down a ringside in front of us here. Damn, both the fucking, uh, the brothers pulling off some big green missile moves there. One through the barricade and another through the fucking ropes. Cause a regular fucking green missile just don't cut it now. And now look at this. Mario's pretty pissed and now he's coming back into the matchup. Look out. Mario now with a beautiful spine buster there. And now picking Mr. L right back up and putting him back down with a Goomba Stomp. And now, shoulders are down. One, two, three. There's the bell, and that's the match. Mario once again winning the 1v1 between these two. But then, look at this. Mr. L actually putting on some good sportsmanship here. Congratulating Mario on his victory. Oh, that's a bit of a fucking surprise. Last time he lost, he fucking refused the handshake, and now he's cheering him on. Alrighty, cool. Whatever floats your fucking go, hell. Uh, don't go anywhere. We got uh, more action coming up next with Tag Team Divas. Coming up next.
So I don't know if you can tell by now, but I have to run an ad break every time there's a rivalry event after the match because I don't have the time to set up the next match. So I've got to run a fucking 60 second ad break. And by setting up the match, I mean doing the betting, the command, setting up the music, that kind of stuff. Not the actual match itself because they're already all set up. I set all of them up in the, the big commercial break, so. And then when the replays are playing, that's when I fucking do all the other shit. But when there's no replays, I haven't got any time to do anything. So it's like, ah, fuck, what do I do? Although in all honesty, tag team matchups take so fucking long to load, I probably would have not needed it anyway. The following tag team match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Outback Australia and Outer Space, Samus Aran and Rose White, the Bombshell Blondes. From Sarasaland in Tokyo, Japan, Sam, uh, Princess Daisy and Wee Fit Trainer, Super Smash Sister. faces they have in that intro it's fucking great <laughs> it's just like mm. <clears throat> anyway there's the bell and our second matchup is underway tag team divas coming at you here for australian takeover thursday the bombshell blondes taking on the uh, super smash sisters once again well i mean they are the only two tag teams for the divas in this business anyway and we don't have intergender matchups so I mean, these two pretty much are the only tag teams that can fight each other. I very much doubt Lara Croft and uh, Raven are ever going to form a tag team. And uh, the Season 3 Diva doesn't look much of a yeah, tag partner herself, so... Spoilers. Although this is certainly a matchup we've seen plenty of times before. Both the uh, Blondes and the uh, Sisters getting off victories by themselves. It's been a pretty back-and-forth contest between these two tag teams. Even though the uh, the bombshell blondes are the uh, the more favoured uh, tag team, considering uh, Rose White's the current and five-time Sheila's champion, Samus Aran, a former Sheila's champion and the season two newcomer, also the tallest diva in the business, I might add. Meanwhile, you've got We Fit, a former Divas champion, uh, Sheila's champion, sorry, and Princess Daisy, the only diva yet to win the Sheila's championship. So it's easy to see why the uh, the blondes are favoured in this matchup, mate. But the Smash Sisters are no pushovers. They've gotten some few wins in this, uh, in the tag matchups themselves, so. Of course, uh, the, there's no uh, Divas Tag Team Championship, so this is just sort of a 
pure exhibition match to uh, show off the variety that we have here at Australian TakeOver. Yeah, with six Divas, we've now pretty much got the freedom to uh, have a good variety of matchups for the females as well as the males. You know, six, uh, six Diva over the top rope battle royale, six Diva elimination chamber, uh, six Diva hell in a cell kind of stuff. You know, it's really a, a, a lot of possibilities. I know for a fact we're going to have some uh, some great shit at the Royal Rumble in two days' time. It's probably going to be a, a six Diva over the top rope if I had to guess, because it is the Royal Rumble after all. Samus now getting tagged in here, getting flattened by uh, We Fit here. Yeah, the big six-foot lady just got fucking dropped. You know, they say the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Beautiful rolling neck breaker by uh, We Fit there. I just remind everyone to, uh, oh, excuse me, stay hydrated. Even if it's not quite uh, hot here in the United States, uh, we're currently live from, of course, Albuquerque. Yeah, right now it's still uh, it's still winter over here, but um, back in our home country, it is still pretty fucking hot. Even though all the storms came through and put out all the fires, there was a bit too much and it decided to flood instead. So good old Australia, going from fucking one of the worst bushfires ever to flash floods. Don't think I'd have it any other way, honestly. Yeah, I'm with you the same. Of course, most of our time is spent here in the uh, United States touring with Australian TakeOver. Hence, the, of course, the name. Even if we only have about four Australian superstars. Yeah, Dusty, Rose, and the, uh, the Aussie brothers. Uh, I say brothers, but the Aussie tag team, I should say. And now Samus Aran, beautiful paralyzer. And now she goes for a quick cover. One, two. No, and we fit with a kick at a two and a half. So I've noticed that's one of the things we uh, we tend to say a lot on this fucking series is the kick at a two kind of thing, you know? It's almost like a fucking staple of this series. If we ever make merchandise, that's definitely going to be one of the things I'm going to do. Although I don't think we're fucking uh, big enough for that quite yet. Although, speaking of big, Samus Aran definitely uh, putting some work in. Now tagging back to Rose here. Yeah, the fucking... Uh, actually, I caught her a five-time, but I'm pretty sure she's actually a six-time Sheila's champion. Now that I uh, think about it, I'm pretty sure Lara Croft is the, uh, the five-time winner. Rose going for a quick cover. She gets a two count. Yeah, Rose White is a six-time Sheila's champion. Lara Croft is the five-time Sheila's champion. Yeah, that's right. And she defended the championship a few weeks ago with no way out. And now she's going to defend it again at Royal Rumble. And uh, if it's going to be another 60 over the top rope like how we had at uh, Battleground, well, Rose should uh, do just fine. Considering that's when she uh, got her fifth uh, Sheila's Championship victory, if I'm not mistaken. Fourth or fifth victory, anyway. I believe that's actually also when Samus Aran lost the Sheila's Championship. And now, look at this. Rose White. Beautiful reverse white twister. Rose now goes for the pinfall. One. Two. No. Daisy quick on the trigger. Breaking up the three count. You know, I shouldn't be surprised at how fucking similar the uh, the whites are to their movesets. And now, look at this. Speaking of, White Thunderbomb rolling through. Tazy once again breaking up the three count. Not giving Rose the opportunity. Yeah, it's just about the talking how similar the fucking whites uh, move sets to each other, and then Rose pulls out the fucking white thunderbomb, a finisher of both the whites. But uh, the only difference is one of them's got the normal white twister. Meanwhile, Rose uses the uh, the reverse version. Rose looking for that beautiful springboard leg drop, hits the mark perfectly. Yeah, missed the rope the first time, but she uh, got it on a second try. 
Landed right on the fucking neck of Wee Fit. That Rose definitely putting in some fucking damage here. Looks for the tag though. Rose happy with her handiwork now. Moving on to uh, let Samus take over. Wee Fit has certainly been taking a lot of damage. Unable to tag to her, her partner here. Yeah, Wee Fit really needs to make that fucking tag, mate. She's been on the receiving end of what a paralyzer, a white twister, and a white thunderbomb. But she finally gets the opportunity to tag, mate. In comes fucking Daisy. Go look at the fucking height difference. It still shocks me every time. But Daisy's got no problem fucking flipping her around. And Samus, even though she's big, she just still have the speed to her advantage. Getting out of the way of two back-to-back -back moves there. Beautiful uh, reverse neck breaker. Daisy just about to get off the ropes there. Gets met with a snap suplex. And now Samus Aran charging up the boots. Looking to put her away. Whoa, boost kick connects. Shoulders are now. One. Two. No, a two and a half, and Daisy gets the kick out. Beautiful uh, crucifix there by uh, Ra uh, Raven. Samus. And now Samus making the tag back to uh, Rose White here. Yeah, now they've put the, they put the fucking damage on uh, Wee Fit. Now they've got to do the same to Daisy. Although the blondes have definitely been in uh, control of this matchup, mate. That's for damn sure. I don't think the uh, the Smash sisters have been able to pull off any of their big moves yet. It's been nothing but the blondes so far. Rose almost turning her attention to uh, We Fit there. Daisy takes the opportunity. And now Daisy looking fired up here. Whoa, look at Rose. Big super scoop slam there to fucking finish her off. And now, I know what's coming next. Into the corner you go. Oh, not quite. Rose with a quick counter there. Not gonna save her though. Fucking uh, Daisy rolls in with that, uh, that kick. Now makes the tag back to uh, We Fit, surprisingly. Yeah, I thought Daisy was going to go in for a bit longer there, but I guess uh, We Fit's coming back in now. She took a lot of punishment from earlier, but the question is, can she deal it back? Rose back to her feet, putting uh, We Fit in the corner. Oh, look out, cut. Corner white twister coming through. Maybe it was a bad time for the sisters to tag. I know that much, mate. Shoulders are down. Daisy once again bringing up the three count. Yeah, Samus is uh, pretty lackluster on those uh, intercepts, mate. Not really giving Rose much of an opportunity to uh, go for those fucking pinfalls. Well, that's the beating of tag team matchups, I suppose. you got to watch out for... So not one, but two cunts. Whoa, beautiful fucking uh, DDT there. On our rows. We're going to put her away. Oh, one more time, mate. White Thunderbomb coming through. But Daisy, once again, just on top of those fucking uh, intercepts. That's four pin covers that uh, Daisy's broken up. And now we fit. Look at this. Handstand. Head scissor. Takedown. What a move to pull out of nowhere. One. Two. Oh, and Samus with the kick out of three. Uh, breaking up the three count, I should say. And now Daisy's got something to say to uh, Samus Aran on the outside here. We fit getting a bit fired up here. 
Now into the corner we go. Beautiful dodge there by We Fit. Off the ropes, dodges the clothesline. Goes for a flying elbow. And down goes Rose. Samus back on the apron now. Finished up with uh, Princess Daisy. And now We Fit here. Into the corner. With another head scissor takedown. Well, the Super Smash sisters finally coming back into this one, Mike. Samus Aran getting a free uh, pinfall break up there. As Daisy and the referee were sort of uh, distracting each other. Daisy now getting tagged in here. Of course, don't go anywhere. We've got uh, plenty of great matchups yet to come. But more on that later. Daisy setting up the uh, drop kick here. Oh, look at Daisy drop kick. Oh, right on the fucking turnbuckle. Now Daisy just going to work on Rose in the corner there. But yeah, we got fucking Shaggy and Mega Man and fucking Pepsi Man and uh, Hank Hill coming up later. Samus once again breaking up the three count. A lot of uh, pinfalls being broken up here tonight. Not many uh, successful intercepts from both teams. Daisy looking at her running now. Uh, bit empty on their stamina tank here. Rose desperately trying to make a tag here. Unsuccessful though. Rose gets a quick opportunity though. Beautiful face buster there. Oh, and another DDT by Rose. Yeah, and now, now she's got the fucking uh, opportunity to make that uh, tag to Samus. Rose was uh, taking a lot of punishment in there, that's for damn sure. Samus going to the top rope. Daisy trying to desperately claw to her as a tag to her partner. And she does so. We fit now coming in here. We fit taking the initiative, putting Samus on the ropes. We know what this means. Well, look at Riff. Handstand, hence there's a takedown coming through, mate. And now Samus looks to be knocked out. Shoulders are down. One, two. No, a two and a half, and Samus getting the kick out. Well, that's the first time I've seen the tag partners not come in and intercept. Must have been com uh, confident that uh, Samus would have gotten the kick out, I guess. Also, not to mention, we've got Shaggy and Mega Man coming up next. Hank Hill and Pepsi Man after that one. Dusty White and Sam Rye finally going head to head again. And Dark Horses and the Enforcers once again going head to head. They won the first week, and it'll uh, be interesting to see if they can round off the uh, the month with another victory. And now, Samus around getting put on the top fucking turnbuckle. Not somewhere you want to be. We fit cider, spider suplex coming through, mate. And now we fit on the top turnbuckle. Oh, a diving elbow hits the back of Samus around. Jeez, we've been going for just about fucking 15 minutes of this matchup, mate. This match should have been over about fucking uh, six minutes ago, but we're still going strong. And now we fit once again. Head scissor takedown one more time. Shoulders are down. One, two, three. There's the bell, and what a matchup. Surprised Daisy got the fucking intercept there, even though she had to go all the way across the goddamn ring. And if Samus wasn't so shit at intercepting, fucking the blondes would have won that like fucking six pinfalls ago. Fuck me, did.
Two down, four to go. Well, the Super Smash Sisters were uh, getting the shit kicked out of them for the first half, but they managed to pull through in the second half with a strong victory there. Yeah, I'm sure that'll definitely motivate the both of them uh, in their upcoming uh, title shot in two days' time at the fucking uh, Royal Rumble. Don't go anywhere, though. We got singles action coming up next with Shaggy and Mega Man coming up next. Frame that is. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. On, and it'll sink first from Coolsville, Ohio, weighing in at 170 pounds. Shaggy. opponent from Dr. White's lab, Mega Man. There's the bell, and match three is on your way. Shaggy taking on Mega Man for their uh, scheduled matchup for the uh, True Blue Championship here tonight. Yeah, we've already decided two of our top 16. Now who will fucking join them? Nine seed Mr. Shaggy here going up against seed number 25, Mega Man. Mega Man, of course, uh, pulled off an upset, beating out seed number eight, RoboCup. Shaggy, of course, beating out uh, seat number 24, Ken Masters, with uh, no shock there. And now, can Mega Man pull the impossible once again and uh, beat the uh, top-seated competitor? Or the higher-seated competitor, I should say. Yeah, but then again, it, no matter who fucking wins this one, they've got to go up against Senator Armstrong uh, in the, uh, the semi-finals. Uh, Even if you win this one, you've still got to face one of the fucking top competitors, so who knows? 
And then we got fucking uh, Pat and Kill and Pepsi Man coming up next, and the winner of that's gonna fight fucking Vladimir Putin. Although both him and Little Mac would have been a scary competitor to face either way, so. But three of the top four have been knocked out already. The only one left is the Terminator, and he's gonna fight Duke Nukem, so. Both Shaggy and Mega Man, of course, are both technically uh, Season 2 superstars. Shaggy did come in a bit earlier, making his first appearance at last year's, or sorry, the first season of Royal Rumble. Coming in at seed number 2, lasting about 6 minutes and unable to get any eliminations. Shaggy made a decent first appearance. Shaggy, of course, went on to well, win most of his matchups, gaining a 72% win rate over, I believe, about 18 matchups. Yeah, Shaggy fucking holds the uh, highest win rate, even if he hasn't had many matchups. He's had a good chunk of them, though. And winning uh, most of them is uh, pretty damn impressive. Gets a two count, though. Actually, fun fact, both Mega Man and Shaggy have had the same amount of matchups at 18 each. Shaggy uh, winning about 72% of those. I believe uh, Mega Man's only won about 50%. Although most of his uh, victories do come from his tag team with uh, Pepsi Man and of the Blue Man group. Yeah, they did win the uh, fucking Cunt Duo Championship, so that's definitely something he holds over uh, fucking Shaggy, that's for sure. Since Shaggy's yet to win any of our uh, championships, mate. He's also yet to have any big major victories like at Royal Rumbles or at SummerSlam or, or any of the big six man matchups, sir. Uh, Oh, that'd be honest, I don't think he's been in any of them yet. Oh, no, sorry, he did win our uh, Desperado tournament, though. I think. Was it him or Nico Bell? I'm pretty sure he won the Desperado tournament. And then he got a title shot for the... Okay, can't which fucking championship he, uh, he fought for. I'm pretty sure it was the Outback, actually. No, sorry, he challenged Dusty White for the for the Boomerang Championship and hang on a cell and lost. That's right. So that was uh, Shaggy's first ever uh, title shot. But he did win the uh, Desperado Tournament of uh, Season 2, so that's probably his biggest victory so far. Getting three wins in a row. And of course, he beat out Ken Masters, which was also one of our Season 2 uh, newcomers. So can he do it again? He did not going against uh, former Condor champion uh, Mega Man. The thing with these fucking matchups though is it really can go any way. The seeding, we might act like it matters, but honestly sometimes it really fucking doesn't. Dusty White got outdone by uh, Senator Armstrong, so who knows. Beautiful fucking uh, hard knuckle there by Mega Man though. Shaggy gets the, uh, the two, kicks out of the two. Oh, and Mega Man going for the charge kick, but missing the mark. Shaggy now taking the opportunity. Beautiful luck. Uh, holding suplex there. Oh, and a big kick to the midsection. And now Shaggy, look at this, Scooby Slam, quick cover here, one, two, oh, a two and a half, and Mega Man gets the shoulder up. I love it, Shaggy doesn't look like he's done with him yet, mate. Oh, Mega Man with a quick counter, though. Shaggy puts him right back down on his ass with that snap, man. A lot of superstars, of course, 32 in total have been entered into this championship, and now we're down to 14. 
Because as we mentioned of Dusty White and Senator Armstrong, Shaggy Mega Man, Little Mac and Vladimir Putin, and Hank Hill and Pepsi Man are of course only eight of the 16. On the other half of the bracket, we've also got the Terminator and Duke Nukem. Mr. L goes up against Leon the Crusader, Donkey Kong and Steve Irwin, and of course Nico Bellic and Pomf Moth. Yeah, definitely some uh, big names and uh, some little names mixed in there as well, mate. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see who, uh, who comes in on top in the following weeks. After tonight's matchup, we've only got eight more superstars to, uh, to divide up into four. Oh, beautiful hard knuckle once again by Mega Man. Oh, and he's following it. Look at this. He's not wasting any time at all. Following right into a Mega Buster cunt. But fucking, oh, no, Shaggy's right back on his feet already. Mega Man not wasting any time with the uh, Dragon Leg Sweeper. But now Mega Man, look at this. Going to work. Goes for the clothesline, but Shaggy intercepts. Mega Man's going to try it again here. And it connects this time. Hard knuckle one more time. Third time's the charm. Goes for the pinfall. One. Two. No, a two and a half. And Shaggy kicks out. Fucking hell. What a combination by Mega Man. Hard knuckle into fucking... Uh, oh, look at this. Fucking mystery machine out of nowhere by Shaggy. Holy shit. Look out. Shaggy with a pinfall now. One. Two. Three. There's the bell and the water matchup. What man? <laughs> Why give you one fuck it the hell, what a match. That fucking exploded right near the end there. Hard knuckle in the fucking mega buster. Into comeback maneuver. Gets reversed, goes for another comeback maneuver. Goes for a third hard knuckle. Still kicks out. And then gets a mystery machine and wins. Fucking hell, dude. This series is fucking wild sometimes. Boring as shit sometimes and then just explodes the next. Shaggy with a big victory there, proving he really deserves that uh, number nine slot. Beating up both Ken Masters and Mega Man, he will go on to fight uh, Senator Armstrong. Don't go anywhere though, more True Blue tournament action coming up next.
Ugh. Gotta love these loading times. <laughs> you know what also annoys me is the loading icon is in a different position than the actual WWE icon. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. In a nursing first, from Arlene, Texas, weighing in at 240 pounds, Hank Hill. And his opponent from South Korea, Pipsy Man. Bow and our fourth matchup is underway. More True Blue tournament action with uh, Hank Hill and Pepsi Man going head to head here tonight. Yeah, I think Pepsi Man is one of the uh, only top seeded competitors still in this at seed number five. Uh, he's going up against seed number 21 of Hank Hill. But uh, Hank Hill did beat out Mario at seed number 12, so interesting to see if he can pull off another upset. Or will Pepsi Man. Uh, Hold his, uh, approve his seed number, I should say. Pepsi Man, of course, a uh, two-time Boomerang champion and a former Kunduo champion. Not to mention with an impressive win rate, earning him the number five slot. Meanwhile, Hank Hill not winning any championships, but he has held a 50% win rate, which is uh, pretty impressive in this business. So he definitely earns that uh, 21 slot. Yeah, 21 slot that we've... Uh, Seeding him into. Yeah, Pepsi Man, he's 42 matchups, 23 wins, so just over 50%. About 55%, give or take, which again is pretty impressive. He's also held the Cunt to a Championship for 12 weeks, so, uh, you know, which is a uh, record in of itself. Hank Hill has had 31 matchups, uh, 16 wins, which uh, also includes his last win over uh, Super Mario, I might add. Before the seeding, he was a perfect 50%. So, we're looking to improve that here, probably. Both of these uh, superstars here tonight, of course, both uh, members of their own tag teams. Hank Gill, of course, one half of the uh, Texas Boys, and Pepsi Man, one half of the uh, Blue Man group. Mega Man, as we saw earlier, just lost to uh, Shaggy. And now Pepsi Man, can he do what his tag partner couldn't? And uh, pick up a victory here. Speaking of tag partners, fucking uh, Hank Hill's tag partner, the coach didn't even fucking qualify, which uh, I don't know what that says. 
But hey, the Texas boys did manage to get runner up in the uh, Cunt Duo Championship King of the Ring matchups. They only lost to the Enforcers. And the only reason they lost was because of a fucking uh, rope break not being seen by the ref, so. But they were unable to follow up on that uh, close victory, so. I don't know what to tell you. Thank you. Going to work with Peps Man here. Goes for a quick cover. He gets a one count. Peps Man kicks out. You see, if you get a one count on your opponent, you got you know for a fact that they're uh, they've still got plenty of energy left, and you need to do something about it, mate. Pepsi Man with a beautiful uh, guillotine there on a hand kill. Now into the snapmare we go. Yeah, just trying to wear down on fucking Hank Hill. Not very effective, though, because Hank pretty much breaks out of it instantly. It also gives Hank the opportunity to get the momentum back, but not quite. Pepsi Man, beautiful fucking reversal there. Into a uh, reverse neck breaker. Oh, a big chop. Oh, Pepsi Man just getting fucking punched into the corner. Thank you with the shoulders now and right into the uh, alley oop bomb. Thank you, not wasting any time at all, putting him on the ropes here. Oh, look at Mike. Inverted USA slam. Oh, face first. Thank you with the cover now. One, two, no, and Pepsi Man with a kick at it too. Hey, that's an improvement from one. <laughs> now that he got the USA slam down, he's got him to a two count. I wonder if he'll pull off a Texas pile driver and put him into three. Down the fucking ringside he goes though. Hank now with a big backbreaker here. And now not wasting any time at all. Back inside the screwed circle. I mean, truthfully, that's where the action should be, is inside the ring. But it sure as hell doesn't hurt coming out of the outside of the ring for every now and again. Unless it's like a, a Extreme Rules match. Then go fucking nuts, bro. Especially because there's no count-outs. Hank Hill putting Pepsi Man in the corner. Hang on. Hank Hill, what's he got in store? Oh, hang on. What's he doing facing that way? Look out! Hank Hill with a beautiful superplex. Right into the ringside arena. Oh, he just laid fucking Pips me out in front of us there. Fucking hell, mate. And now I'm back and saw the ring again. Hank Hill really not fucking wasting any time here, mate. What a fucking superplex, though. I'm sure as I don't see those very often. Although I don't think anything's going to beat the superplex that Little Mac pulled off against fucking Shrek. 561 pounds getting superplexed by a 117 pound man. Dude, Shrek weighs five times more than Little Mac. And he still fucking superplexed him like it was no big deal. Like, holy shit. I don't think that's the moment I'm ever going to forget. Hank Hill once again going down the ringside. Making the most of the uh, the count, 10 count out that he has on the uh, outside. Yeah, by taunting at Pepsi Man. It's a great, uh, great use of time. But though he is in basic control of the matchup, so I guess I can't blame him too much. Oh, I run into the fucking steel ring post. Of course, we've still got more action yet to come. Dusty White and Sam Rye coming up next to uh, settle their differences. And also the Dark Horses and the Enforcers squaring off once again. 
And this two tag teams have sort of been going back and forth over the last few months, on and off, and well, now they're facing each other once again. Pepsi Man now back inside the ring. And now Hank Hill. Firing away with a Texas jab. Down goes Pepsi Man. Isn't enough though. Here we go. Hank with a cover here. One, two, three. There's the bell and what an upset. Fucking hell, that's seeds number one, three, four, and five have been eliminated. The only one left is the Terminator. Oh, and I guess Pomp Pomp, he's seed number six. Seat number, who's seat number seven? Oh, it's Big Al, he's out. Seat number eight was Robocop, he's out. Big upset victory for Hank Hill, knocking out seat number five. Hank Hill will move on and he will face Vladimir Putin. Funny enough, it's seat number 20. Meanwhile, Hank Hill's seat number 21. Who knows, we'll come out on top on that matchup. Don't go anywhere though, we got Dusty White and Sam Rye coming up next. And this was the match I accidentally opened, and I'm pretty sure if it does the same thing, I'm not going to get a chance to do my intros. I genuinely question what comes out of your mouth sometimes, Nap. Ah, I see you posted the same thing in the bunker. Why am I not surprised? Dusty and Sam starting off with a uh, solid friendly handshake here. Yeah, nice to see some uh, some friendship in all this fucking chaos, I'll tell you what. Oh, it started off with a fucking super kick. Sam, he's not wasting any time here, mate. What a fucking way to start a matchup. Handshake your opponent, wait for the bell to ring. And then just fucking kick him in the face. And now Dusty firing right back with a white twister. We're going from the word go here. One, two, and Sam with a kick out of two. Well, we're certainly not wasting any time getting into the thick of things here. Super kick right into a uh, white twister. And now Sam Wright, Sam Wright, looking to return the favor, sends him down the ringside. Oh, Sam setting up Dusty on the uh, steel ring post here. This is not a sound you'll forget. Ugh. Skull crushing big boot. Both Sam and Dusty have that fucking move in their repertoire, but I don't think I've seen Dusty be on the receiving end of that move too often, mate. Dusty, though, back on his feet here. Even after the skull crushing big boot, finds his way back to the uh, ring. Trying to go for a white thunder bomb, I think. Not getting the opportunity. He's going to go for it now, though. Oh, look out, mate. Like we said, we're not wasting fucking any time getting them to think of this matchup. White thunder bomb. Shoulders are down. One. Two. Now when Sammy Boy gets the kick out of two. But what a match so far. Big boot there by Dusty trying to uh, even the score. Sam Ryan, of course, uh, challenged Dusty White 
to uh, try and prove himself worthy for the uh, Boomerang Championship to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Although he he did win the uh, the first week these two met each other. But both Dusty White and Sam Ryan won their respective uh, matchups not against each other. And that'll be interesting to see if Sam Ryan can pull off yet another victory here. Although, if I gotta be honest, I think he's already proven himself to uh, to be worthy of a title shot for the Boomerang Championship, mate. Even if he doesn't lose here, he's certainly... Uh, sorry, even if he doesn't win here, I should say. I reckon he's still gonna get that title shot. As Sam has had uh, title shots in the past for the Boomerang Championship, but never in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Uh, he was the runner-up for last year's Elimination Chamber at uh, Survivor Series. He was also in this year's Elimination Chamber, once again became the runner-up, only lost to uh, Skeletor. And now Sam desperately wants that 1v1. Go for a pinfall here. Gets the two count, Dusty kicks out. Yeah, Sam was also uh, in the Fatal 4-Way with, what was it, Skeletor, Dusty, Sam Rye, and I think Pomf Monf. And um, Dusty White somehow got the fucking victory in that matchup, getting his third uh, Boomerang Championship. It's uh, no way out. And I think that's what spurred uh, Sam Rye to go for this one-on-one uh, -on -one matchup. But look out, cunt. Corner White Twister coming through. Shoulders are down. One, two, no, a two and a half, and fucking Sam gets the kick out just in the nick of time. With Sam holding on for uh, dear life here, but can he turn it around? Gets the deja vu though. Well, I tell you what, he's firing right back though. Definitely some great fucking back and forth contest between these two, mate. Oh, up in the air he goes, and Codebreaker as he comes back down. But the ref's knocked out. Sam can't go for the pinfall. Well, Dusty fucking kicked out immediately anyway. I tell you what, this has been a hell of a five minutes so far, that's for damn sure. Dusty getting put on the second rope here. Look out, ref. Beautiful leg drop there by uh, Sam. And now he's going to the top rope. Oh, diving elbow connects. And now Sam going for a pinfall one more time. One, two. Now went Dusty with a kick out of two. Sam Ryan, total control on the matchup. Probably would have gotten a three count if the ref wasn't knocked out. Now he's gonna try and find that opportunity again. Dusty with a quick counter. Dusty, of course, a two-time Outback champion and a three-time Boomerang champion. Compared to, of course, Sam Rye, yet to win a uh, championship belt, but as we mentioned before, he has become the runner-up multiple times just sort of inches away from that championship victory. And now look out, White Thunderbomb coming through. One, two, three. There's the bell and that's all she wrote. What a fucking performance though, holy shit. That was a great match from start to finish. Like, even if Sam didn't win, that was a good performance that he put on, and he definitely deserves that fucking title shot. I was gonna give it to him, no matter whatever he won or lost there. means that Dusty goes into the title match with the momentum with this win so 
Momentum is everything in this business. I'm gonna pee, so I'm probably gonna do a 60 second ad break, go and pee and then come back. Actually, no, I can hold on to it. Oh, no, but it's a tag team match and they take fucking forever. Dusty Y with a solid victory there. A beautiful back and forth between uh, both competitors. But Dusty fighting. Sorry, Dusty finally pulling through in the end with that white thunderbomb putting away Samurai. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a great match for the fucking Boomerang Championship, mate. Don't go anywhere, though. We got fucking um, Dark Horses and the Enforcers coming up next. Jesus Christ, nope. Anyway, I'm gonna do an ad break and we'll be back right after this. If the ad even fucking works. Wait, shit, why did I go back to main menu? Hello? Alright, last match of tonight. And then that's the end of the stream. Fuck, it's already like 2pm. I've been streaming for what, two and a half hours? Okay, two and a half. Ah, oh, you do. It says it up there, dickhead. I've got a fucking timer up there, and I'm not even looking at it. Can I get something interesting to happen, like, before or after the match? I want shit to happen in these fucking rivalries. Oh, I guess not. The following tag team match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the United States, with a combined weight of 503 pounds, they are the Cunt Duo Champions, Duke Nukem and Gummy John, Dark Horses.
their opponents. Also from the United States, weighing in at 524 pounds, Robocop and Sergeant Silent Derp, the Enforcers. No, I can see it. Although for some reason I'm pretty sure I explained the fact that the flips don't fucking count for WWE streams. Because it breaks the fucking realism. That's the problem. Like, I'll absolutely hold you to that. I uh, will do that. But I'm not doing it during a WWE stream. Or ATT, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. But I promise you, next time I stream a normal game, and you're in chat, I'll do it. There's the bell, and Duke Nukem is starting us off strong with a uh, beautiful uh, suplex there. The Dark Horses and the Enforcers once again going head-to-head -head here tonight. Yeah, probably the uh, the second most classic rivalry of uh, tag teams here in Australian Turkey, but the other one being of the uh, Mario Brothers and, of course, the Warrior Brothers. But the Enforcers and the fucking Dark Horses. What a fucking rivalry these two have had, let me tell you. Yeah, the, uh, the Dark Horses were formed just before WrestleMania of uh, last season. Uh, the two of them began to uh, attack uh, other tag teams randomly. And then, of course, the Enforcers decided to uh, put a stop to them. I went back and forth uh, contest between the two teams. The Enforcers did come out on top in the end, but with a bit of an unsatisfying ending. The Enforcers then went on to win the Cunt Duo Championship at Night of Champions after the uh, Tag Team King of the Ring tournament. Beating out the uh, the Texas boys in also an unsatisfying ending. A uh, rope break not being seen by the referee. It's amazing how the fucking uh, the enforcers got two big victories. Both with a uh, rope break not being seen by the ref. And of course the Texas boys wanted a rematch but unfortunately couldn't prove themselves worthy. Uh, the Warrior Brothers however did and they went up for the title shot at... I believe Hell in a Cell. And they were, of course, unsuccessful. And then came along the Dark Horses. Once again, starting uh, some shit up back with the Enforcers and then stealing the uh, championship belt. The Enforcers were unsuccessful in getting the championship belt back from the Dark Horses at No Way Out. And now they'll have one more chance to uh, get it back at the Royal Rumble. Oh, and a big spear there from uh, Robocop. Just flattening uh, Duke Nukem. Damn, Gummy John just sort of stood there and watched, to be honest. I'm surprised he didn't take uh, the opportunity. Robocop with a quick tag now to Silent Derp. And now the two leg based superstars going head to head. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a few of them in this business, but Gummy John and fucking uh, Sergeant Silent Derp are definitely two of them, that's for sure. Not to mention with Gummy Job and his fucking uh, sonic kicks. And you got uh, Silent Derp's uh, military high knees. Definitely two, sh two moves you really need to watch out for. Oh, Gummy John quickly back to his feet there. Met with a uh, side slam though. It didn't get real far from that one.
Gummy John now making the quick tag back to Duke Nukem. Although speaking of uh, Duke, he's the only cut out of these four that's actually still in the uh, True Blue Championship. Although I believe we mentioned this a couple weeks ago. Since Gummy John, Silent Derp and Robocop all lost in the first week of, um, oh, sorry, the first round of uh, True Blue Championships and Duke Nukem might lose as well. He's going to face the fucking Terminator in the uh, coming weeks. The only top seed competitor, competitor that's actually still in. And just about everyone else has been fucking eliminated. Dusty White. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Little Mac. Pepsi Man. Uh, Pop Martha is still in. He's at seed number six. Although he's going to face fucking uh, Nico Bellic. Duke Nukem with a quick cover. He gets a two count. Yeah, the only other top seed of competitors left are the Terminator at seed two, Pomp at seed six, and Shaggy at seed nine. And now some more tag team action there between the Dark Horses. Really putting their uh, tag, uh, sorry, their teamwork to good use. The Dark Horses, of course, proving they, the uh, Apparently, do deserve that uh, cut duo championship. Although Gummy just letting uh, the enforcers get a free tag there. Robocop, uh, of course, getting tagged in now. Oh, and a big elbow connects. Of course, friendly reminder that the Royal Rumble is our next event in two days' time. Coming with a quick cover here. He gets a two count. Robocop kicks out. Yeah, the fucking Royal Rumble, mate. The best pay per view event of the year in two days' time, mate. Oh, I cannot fucking wait. We're going to be starting the event off with the uh, season three reveal trailers. So you definitely don't want to miss that. And uh, we're going to be finishing it up with the 30 man Royal Rumble. So it's definitely going to be an event to remember. That's for uh, that's for sure. And as we've talked about, we've also got the new layout here for Australian Takeover that we're going to be unveiling at uh, the uh, Royal Rumble. We will, should be starting at our regular time of 11.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we don't know what that is in American time. We're not, uh, we don't have a time zone converter handy with us. And now the Dark Horses. Beautiful teamwork here. With a neck breaker run into an elbow drop. Silent Derp with the uh, quick break up of the pinfall. Actually, if I, if I, if I know my time zones correctly, I think it's 5.30, 6.30 and 7.30 if I'm not mistaken. Going from east to west. Uh, don't quote me on that one. And hopefully we should uh, should start on time. Hopefully if nothing goes fucking wrong. Duke Nukem now coming back to the action with a beautiful backstabber there. Dark Horse is really pulling out all the stops and you can see why. USA Suplex is coming through. Yeah, some fucking great tag team action from the, uh, from the Dark Horses, mate. And then they're looking to uh, run ahead here. Oh, but Silent breaks up the fucking three count again. Great interception there. But Duke Nukem wasting no time at all. But the come get some. Silent Dirt still knocked out. This is an opportunity for the Dark Horses. Shoulders are down. One. Two. No, a two and a half. And Robocup manages the kick out. Robocop trying to get back to his feet. Not being too successful though. Gets pushed into the corner. Oh, and a big knee connects. Duke Nukem now going to work with even more German, German suplexes. 
Well, that, yeah, that one was more of just a pure German suplex, not a uh, triple one. Duke looking for the tag. Manages to make it, though. Gummy John now coming inside the ring. Robocop desperately trying to get to uh, Simon to make the tag. Not going to be successful, though. Getting laid out by Gummy. Well, of course, the winner of tonight's matchup definitely going to uh, take the momentum with them going into the uh, title shot for the World Championship in two days' time. And right now, it really looks like the Dark Horses are in full control of this matchup. Although they tried to go for another tag team maneuver. A bit unsuccessful, that one. Robocop put on the top turnbuckle here. Not somewhere you want to be. Duke Nukem with another German suplex right from the top turnbuckle. Just throwing Robocop across the arena. Duke Nukem going for a pinfall here. Tries to go for the legs up on the uh, second rope. Not even getting the one count there. Gummy John not doing a uh, real good job of the interceptions. <laughs> Look out! Fucking power bomb right into the cup. Duke Nugum once again setting up the uh, USA suplexes here. Is he going to get the pinfall this time? Oh, he's on the wrong side of the fucking uh, ring for that one, mate. I don't think he's too far away enough. Yep, that's an easy fucking break up for Silent there. Tobagami brings him right back inside the ring. Gummy John's throwing uh, Silent back outside now as Robocop tries to uh, gain some momentum here. Oh, and a big elbow drop there. Gosh, you can fucking hear that one, mate. 300 pounds of fucking uh, cyborg just coming down on him there. And now Duke Nukem not wasting any time. Come get some one more time. Shoulders are down and right in front of fucking Simon. I mean, Robocop's taking a lot of fucking damage, but he, he's really not pinfalling him in the uh, greatest of spots, mate. The Dark Horses probably would have won this if uh, Big Gummy was better at interceptions or Duke was actually pinfalling in the correct fucking spots. But now they've made the tag and now they've got to wear down Silent as well as Robocop. Silent Dope getting put on the top turnbuckle though. And now German suplex. Here we go again. Now Duke Nukem going for a pinfall. Oh, and he gets the three count. You fucking what? Yeah, right, huh? And again, nothing happening on the rivalry because, of course, God fucking damn it. Well, certainly a strange way to get their victory, but the Dark Horse has pulled through. They will certainly have the momentum on their side as they go into the Cut Duo Championship match in two days' time in the Royal Rumble. Oh, my, I can't fucking wipe. I'll see you all cunts there in the Royal Rumble. 
Don't miss it. That's all from us tonight, Australia Takeover Thursday. We'll see you all at our pay-per-view event at the Royal Rumble. Same place, same time. Ah, <sighs> fuck, no. Fucking Royal Rumble, baby. It's gonna be good. Like I've got all the I've got all the trailers ready. I've I've got it all finished, all polished. So now I pretty much just need to unveil them in two days' time, so. But yeah, same deal as last year. One female, four male. Um, place your bets on who's going to fucking get in, because who knows? Well, I'm sure as shit not telling. Even though I did accidentally unveil one of them. Actually, I think it was a season four superstar in one stream, but I don't think anybody picked up on it. <laughs> Uh, I don't have anybody to raid, I don't think. I need to actually get back to my fucking homepage. Nope. Alright, cool. See you cunts in two days' time.